Hi, I'm George Pearson, and these are just a few examples from some of the training videos I have here on YouTube. Now, when you're working with the training, following along the training, if you want to get the materials I used in the training, just go to the description down below and click on the link that's at the top of the description, and this will take you to a page where you can download the materials. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course, always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. In this how-to video, we're going to make this wanted poster. Now, the only part that's brought in is the photograph in here. Everything else is made inside of Photoshop Elements. It's pretty straightforward. A little bit of work, but it's pretty straightforward. Nothing really dramatically difficult in here. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll start off by making a new file. We'll just close that out of the way. So file, new, and blank file. It's set up here as a custom size. Here's our default size. Let's go to the default size and then switch the width and the height. So make it four wide and six tall, 300 pixels per inch. And that's our basic portrait sized image. And there we go. Okay, we're going to now start by working from the back to the front and the first thing to do is actually fairly easy and that is to put in our kind of fake wood background in here. Now over here where we have the colors, click on the foreground color and just choose something in the browns. So I'm right down here in the mid-range of the oranges and then about a quarter of the way in and a quarter of the way down. You know something around here anywhere is fine, it doesn't have to be exact on this, just something in there, that range. So you have kind of a light brown and then a black. We'll now go up here to Filter and Render and Fibers. There we go. Now with Fibers you can click on Randomize until you see what you like. Most of these will work out pretty well. The settings I have here for Variance is 22 on the Variance and Strength is 7. If you bring the variance down, you get larger chunks like this. If you bring it up, it gets a lot finer, a lot tighter. So let's have my set at 22. Works out pretty well. Choose OK. And it just fills that with this kind of fiberish look. Now, if you want to, you can adjust the color at this point. Just go up to Enhance, come down to Adjust Color, and then do Hue Saturation. And in here, you can adjust the lightness. I'll bring ours down just a bit like that. Make it a little bit darker. You can bring the saturation down if you want to. Just give it kind of an old wood look. It's going to be just around the outside edge. So this should be pretty fine. Again, what I'm using here is saturation negative 20, lightness negative 22, but anything really in here is fine. Just give it kind of a basic wood effect. There we go. Okay, first step done. Now, let's make a new layer in front of that layer. Here we go. This layer is going to be our basic poster layer. We'll do a few things on this poster layer. Let's change our color. Now the one that I used on this is DBC 387 right there. So again I'm still in the mid oranges in here, kind of our, our, our brown range. And over here, about two thirds of the way over and about a quarter of the way down. There's anything around in here is fine. Just kind of a light tannish kind of a color in there. That'll be our basic color. Let's go ahead and fill this with that basic color. There we go. We'll then apply a few things onto this to get our basic effect. The main thing I want to have in here is some texture onto this. There are several different ways of doing texture. We'll be just putting in some film grain onto this one and use that one as our texturing effect. So filter and filter gallery right here and we're in the artistic section up there and film grain just kind of puts a texture onto that. Now the settings I have on this one here we go. I have grain set at 8, highlight area set at 10 and intensity set at 9. But anything kind of in this range should work out fine for you and choose OK. And that brings in our film grain effect. Now as you can see it's too strong so we need to soften this up a bit and we'll do that by giving it just a little bit of a Gaussian blur. So filter 
blur Gaussian blur and in here I'll set mine at this little two pixels it just kind of softens that up you see it right there just kind of softens it up okay so now I have a bit of texture on this we can come in here and if you want to change the coloration a little bit you can do that as well Let's do just a little bit of coloration change that's enhance adjust color and hue saturation and I actually set mine at a saturation of plus 34 and I brought the lightness up to 22 just kind of brightens the whole thing up a little bit there we go you normally have to make an adjustment at this point because the film grain look darkens the page down so you need to bring it back up again with the hue saturation so there we go so we have our basic paper in here and then behind that is our wood effect okay now we're still on our paper layer I'm just going to type this or just change the name up here and let's call this one poster paper it's our poster paper layer now let's pull the top down a little bit and the sides in not too far just a little bit so you can kind of see a frame out there of the wood tone like that there we are okay basic wood tone frame effect now I want to darken down the edges of this we're we'll doing a couple of layers of darkening down we'll start off with this first layer we're going to darken it down we're then going to do our edge adjustment and then do some more darkening down after that I mean doing this in a few layers because it looks a little bit more natural this way okay so let's make a new layer above this layer there we go new layer and let's change our foreground color and the one that I used on this was C8971 and then C again so as you can see we're still in the same basic range it's just darker and a bit richer over here on the right hand side kind of about a quarter down about a fifth of the way in still in the same brown range right down there and choose OK now on this I'm going to pull the edges out here as far as I can like that give myself some space to work with and we're going to be painting into this layer right around the edges with a real large soft brush let's put that right there go to our brushes I'll change these brushes here to our default brushes and choose a soft brush and change the size to 600 so it's a pretty large brush so right there it is pretty large sized brush I'm just going to brush outside here kind of around the outside and you'll see it kind of like that and not doing it real even just kind of spotty in there just get a bit of a, a randomness on this don't worry about the outside stuff we're going to fix that as soon as we do the rough edge on this thing so that gives us some coloration in here let's now change the blending mode on this layer we'll go in here we're going to change the blending mode to color burn and that darkens it down and you see how we're seeing the more of the film grain in there now it just gives us kind of again that that rough effect in here and then if you want to you can also pull this back a little bit if it's too much pull it back just bring the opacity back now maybe about 50 percent or so there we go just pull it back a little bit like that now the reason why you're you're seeing this background here is because this is darkening down the dark colors we're not really seeing anything it's just kind of disappearing down there but we're going to be changing that effect anyway okay that's our first two steps on this let's now hide that layer come back to our poster layer we're now going to be putting in our torn edges on this thing this is possibly the longest part of this whole process it doesn't actually take that long at all it's just it takes a little while to get around the whole whole process so switch over here to the lasso tool I'm using the polygonal lasso tool click on that first button right there that makes it a new selection there we go feathering is set at one pixel I kind of always leave mine at one pixel unless I need to do something else we'll start up here at the top and just begin doing just little clicks and doing kind of a rough edge around this thing now don't go too fast on these clicks if you do it's going to collapse the selection 
and then you'll need to start all over again, which I know you don't want to do. I certainly don't. So make sure you take your time, breathe deeply while you're doing this. You know, as I like to say, get in kind of a Zen mode when you're doing these polygonal lasso tool selections. And just take the time to go ahead and move around and do a nice little selection. Little tear right there. When you're doing it, these tears, just you know, come back in right next to where you went out. Now, if you're doing this kind of wanna poster, don't go too much on these cutout pieces. Keep them a little bit close to the edge. It's about as far as I'd want to go on that. If you're doing you know, like a, an old pirate map where you're trying to do a, a torn edge effect, you can come in a lot further on that because pirate maps tend to be older. They're going to have more tearing on the edges. The water poster won't have as much. It may have a bit of weathering. It might be you know, a few years old sitting outside. I like cutting off my corners like that. Corners tend to get torn off fairly easily on things. So we'll do the corners kind of lopped off there. Again, just take your time, work your way around. And you're doing the top and the bottom. Don't do any tears on the top and the bottom. The idea behind the tear is that that's where the page maybe was folded. So your folds are always going to be the same direction and because of that your tears will also be in the same direction. So we're doing our folds across left to right so the tears are going to be coming in left to right as well. And it's just a matter of working your way up slowly and doing this nice little edge. And this little tear right here I think is a good spot for one. And again, it's worked back pretty close to that. And then we'll do one more tear to get towards the top up here. Right up here someplace. And we'll cut this top corner off again. And of course, as I mentioned before, no tears across the top or the bottom. We'll keep those relatively even. And come back to the beginning and click to close out that selection. There we go. Now, let's come down to our, make sure we're still on our poster paper level right there, layer. There's our selection. And then just hit the layer mask button. There we go. It makes that layer mask, and that gives us that torn paper edge. Now that we have that, I'll switch over here to the Move tool. Now we have that, you can copy this up to any of your other layers. So let's bring this layer back on again. There we go. Hold the Alt key down, grab this, and just drag it up. And that copies that layer up. So there we are. There's our torn paper effect. And we have our darkening on our edges first stage on the darkening. Let's now do another layer up in here. So new layer, I want this layer on top, so let's drag it to the top of our stack. We'll do another darkening layer on this one. I'll use the same color, and on the brush, let's make our brush half as big this time. So we had it at 600, let's change this to 300. There we go, up here. I'm just going to come in just a little bit more on the edges here. So you see we were in further on the first one and we're out a bit further on this second one. And it's kind of tapping it so it's it's rough and uneven. I'm not just painting. I'm kind of tapping in there like that. Let's take the layer mask down here, hold the Alt key, drag it up, copies that layer mask. And then let's change this also to a color burn. And that darkens down that edge even more. There we are, looking pretty good. Okay, now I want to put in some folds and things in here, and then we'll do a little bit of distressing on this as well. So once again, another layer, and leaving all the color the same and the brush the same, all that's fine. Let's go back up to our polygonal lasso tool. Let's just put a, a fold right along from this one, this tear over here, kind of along that line, this little fold thing. I'll do a bit from here, then a bit from over there. Now just come right along the edge, like that, and then just 
carry it out a little bit. It can be a little bit rough. And I'll bring it right down over to here and then right along this edge. And then just down around the bottom. This bottom part doesn't matter. Just give yourself some space in there and close it off. Let's now go back to our brush. And just right across the top. It's a little bit on each side like that. A little paint here, a little paint there. And then let's deselect that. That's that edge right here. Let's put a few more of those things in. Put one right from this little peak right here. It's a good spot. I'll come in and just do another one right in here. Just about like that. It's as far as I need. And it's kind of around the edges here and then back to our starting point. Back to our paintbrush. Just a little bit right in there. A little short one. Deselect. Let's do one off of these two. So again, polygonal lasso tool, just kind of follow along the bottom edge of that one tear. And this just work our way around over down to this tear and follow along this edge. And then again, just down and around like that. Back to our brush and just cross the top of those. There we go. And let's deselect that. Back to the polygonal lasso tool again. And I'll do a little bone right in this middle section here, and maybe one right down there. Just a little bit like this, and I'll come down here a bit, and let's see if we can come down to that spot right there. And back around. And a little bit over here, a little bit over there. Deselect. Just working our way down to the bottom of the picture. Let's do one across the bottom right here, across this one tear. Just kind of extends that tear like that. And I'll pull this one around and finish that off. And a little bit like that. That's good. And then off of these two tears on the right hand side. Let's just do one for each one of these tears in here to stay close to the bottom of that and bring it in just a little bit. And back to the beginning. Oh, clicked it too fast right there and it collapsed. So let's just go a little bit slower. Back to our beginning. And a little right there. Deselect. And then the last one, this little tear right here. We'll do a little bit on that, a little bit further out this time. And back to the beginning. And again, just kind of brush the top of that edge. Okay, so far so good. We now have these little lines in here. It adds a bit of texture. Let's copy our layer mask from this layer. Hold the Alt key down, drag it up, copies that layer mask that clips that edge. And then once again, we're going to come in and change our coloration here. We'll do color burn this time. You can do different ones if you want. You can do you know linear burn, multiply. There's different qualities of effects in here. Choose whichever one you happen to like. I kind of color burn because it shows a lot of the texture through it. It's too much as you can see though. So let's just bring this down to 50% as well. I'll just type in 50. And there we go. So there's the basic paper. Now I want to put a drop shadow around this whole thing, and that's done on our bottom layer right down there. And that's layer, layer style, style settings, drop shadow, and leave the size and the opacity as this is bring our distance out to about 15 or so. So you can see a little bit of a drop shadow now down around that edge. It's not too far out, so it doesn't look fake, but just enough of a drop shadow so it appears to be standing just off the surface. Okay, there we go. There is the background. Last little trick on this, we're going to add one more layer up here. And just do a little bit of texturing on this layer, add a little bit more of an interesting look to it, just to kind of distress it a little bit further. I'll put this right there for a second. Let's go back to our brush. I'm going to change the brush here to our natural brushes too, right there. And the very top one up here, called Chalk Dark, we'll take that one, set the size down pretty small to 20 pixels. 
I'm just going to dock this for a second, get that out of the way. There we go. Go to Brush Settings, set the spacing up to 1000% and the scatter up to 100%. Go clear to the, the top on both of those and close that down. Now, as you click in here, it's just going to put in some little dots like this just around the page, a few scattered dots. It just adds a little bit of texture to the page. There we go. Now you can leave those as is if you want to, or you can come in and do a blending mode. I would, though, take the layer mask alt drag to copy that up so it doesn't come over onto the outside here. And then there's color burn. It's a bit dark on this one. There's multiply, it's too dark. Linear burn, that's not too bad. And I'll bring the opacity again down to about 50% or so, maybe a bit further down. I think 25 percent. Let's type that in. Looks pretty good. Just a little bit of spottiness in there to add a bit of additional texture onto that page. Okay, that takes care of all that. So you can see we have our darkening layer one here. I'm going to call this one dark one. Darkening layer two right there. This one is the I'll call it the folds. They're not actually folds, but they're kind of like that. Folds, and this one's the spots. So we have those layers. And that gives us most of our texture. All right, let's now float this back out again. And we're now ready to bring our kid picture in here. And I have that up in my recently used file. And the link for this picture is on the material support page for this. Just look for the link in the description to find that. You can also download the PDF file for this whole project if you want to. Okay, let's just take this and drag it onto our file like that. There we go. We can now close this out. Let's now just bring the size down, grab the corner and pull the size down. Somewhere about like that. So his hat is about in the middle third of the picture. And that looks pretty good. Put them right about, right about there. Okay, now we need to do a couple of things onto this picture. We're going to be doing a layer mask around the shape, and then we'll do some softening up on the edge of that. So let's zoom in. Come in nice and tight like that. And I'll grab the polygonal lasso tool. It's a hard edge pretty much in the whole picture, so this tool works out fine. I'll start right here at that corner. And then just work around and follow the whole edge. Take your time on this. And don't click too quickly or you will collapse that selection down. And then you have to start over again. You don't want to do that. So make sure you take your time. We're going to be softening up this edge so it isn't really, really critical. So just, you know, however you want to select it out. Now, if you get down to the picture like this, hold the shift bar down or space bar down rather. And then you can move that you get the little hand tool make sure they're space bar like that you get the hand tool you can then readjust the picture so we're doing that just a few times in here we're just going to go around the whole picture here of the boy and just use this selection to create a layer mask and then once we have our layer mask done we then can convert this to a sepia tone effect and do the edge softening on this to make it look like it's part of the printing on the poster. And again, just like the edge on the paper, just take your time and work around on the whole image. Okay, let's just go along the edge here of the wood. And again, space bar and drag it over. Don't worry about the edges in here. We're going to be softening those edges down and rounding those off a bit. Okay, space bar, pull it over again. And just working our way around the whole picture to give us a nice clean selection. Now you can use different tools to make the selection. If you have a different tool you prefer to use, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. I just happen to like using this tool because of the amount of control that I have on the tool. It may take a little longer than some other tools, but I can position my selection exactly where I want it. I can be you know, really precise if I zoom in further 
In this case, I don't need that, but it does give me that option to be very, very precise on that selection, which is why I happen to like using this particular tool. Okay, more than halfway done at this point, and we'll finish this off and then make our layer mask and then blend this guy into the poster look, which is actually a pretty fast part of this whole process. Okay, space bar, clear at the top here. Coming in for the finish on this part of the process. As you can see, it really doesn't take that long to do this. Fairly straightforward. It's, it's an easy, easy picture here. Actually, it's a nice, cl nice clean separation between the background and the foreground. And when you're doing this, there's a little bit of a softness on that edge. If I was zoomed in more, you could see that. Just try to stay right in the middle of that softness when you do this, this kind of a selection, and you'll be exactly where you need to be. Okay, just moving back on the top. Finish off the hat, and then we have our selection made. And it's come up around the top. We have the brim and, of course, the crown of the hat to do as well. And then we're all set. Some people ask me if I'm using a tablet and a pen on these things, and I'm not. I am doing this old-fashioned way. I'm using a mouse and a nice mouse pad, of course. And I do that because most people have mice. So I'm using the same tools that the average user has. I'm not trying to be real fancy in here. Tablets are great, pens are great, but we'll do things the way most people do them. Okay, there we go. There's our selection. Let's just zoom out. That's the Alt key, and we'll zoom out a little bit here. There we go. Back to our layer. Hit the layer mask button, and there we go. All right, now I want to convert this guy to a black and white effect. A bit of coloration and we'll do that with our hue saturation so that's up here at enhance adjust color and make sure you're on the image side look for that light blue outline there we go if, you, if you're over here like I was just then just double click on the image side so you see that enhance adjust color there it is hue saturation click on colorize and let's adjust this for a nice brown tone kind of like that Bring our saturation up just a little bit. Bring the lightness down. Kind of in here somewhere. Looks pretty good. And choose OK. Now let's soften up the edges around here. And we'll do that on the layer mask. So double click on the layer mask. And go back to our brush tool. We need to reset our brush. So go back to the default brushes. And just choose a soft brush right there. And let's set this brush size pretty good size. I'll do 165, should be pretty close. That's good. So we have a soft edge brush in black. We're on the layer mask. And then just paint around the edges here, around the bottom, to, to soften out those edges, kind of soften those out. Don't do anything at the top. Just stay out here on the bottom part to soften that. Doing like a little basic hand-done vignetting effect around the bottom edge. Okay, that's good. Now I want to soften the rest of it up here, but I want to have that softening done a lot more specifically, a lot more accurately. So we'll do that with a filter and blur and then Gaussian blur. And you can see right there, there's, there it is hard and let go, there it is, the soft edge. Change this to five. And it just kind of softens up that edge a bit right in there. It looks real nice. So he's pretty good in here and then just kind of a soft fading out edge around the outside edge and there's the there's the kid now all we need to do is to bring in our text so let's make a new layer above this layer I'm going to dock this again there we are and we'll do our text now for the text I want to describe a brown in here from the dark part of the image so click on our foreground color and you know something in here is kind of a, a dark brown just grabbed from the actual picture so that our our text color will match that we'll need to reset that on the text but that's the basic idea we're using just something from the dark area here okay going over to the text tool one that i used is called rockwell extra bold regular 
And if you see that up here, there it is. It's just a fat typeface with square ends on it. Anything that's kind of like that is fine. You can go real fancy if you want to, but this works out pretty well. It's a pretty standard typeface, but anything that's bold and has squares, square serifs, it'll work out fine for this. That's just kind of a nice old-fashioned look. Now the size that I want on here for the text, change that right down here. And we're going to change our type size down to 36, which is right there. And the letting actually does not matter because it's going to be on its own layer. Have it set for centered, bold is fine. Now we need to make sure we have the right color. Let's click on the color, come over here and then click on that. Choose OK, and that should set the color to match that color. All right, click right here, and then doing it as caps. There we go. And looks like my typeface changed. I mean, that's the condensed version. I don't want the condensed. I want that one right there, extra bold, regular. OK. And I'll put that right there. There's our wanted type. Now put our reward right down beneath that. We'll adjust the positions on these things once we have all the text in place. So new layer up here. Back to the type tool. Cut the size in half. So that's 18. And click in here. I'll just put in here the $5,000 reward. It's on its own layer, so you can move that around anywhere you want to. So you have some freedom in there. Let's now do another text layer, come down to the bottom, a couple of things down here. At the same text size, let's put in our sheriff notification. I'll click right here. There we go, make sure I spell that right. Okay, I've seen notify sheriff, put that just like that, and then new layer again. The reason I'm doing new layers each time is otherwise it's going to select the, a different text layer. I don't want to be switching layers on me. So just do a new text layer, go to your type tool and it becomes a type layer once you begin typing. Let's now change the type size here. I'm going to bring it down just a little bit smaller. And let's set this one to 12 point and letting at 14 point because it's, it's a multi-line bit of type. Let's put that in here and then let's just put in our little bit that the guy has been up to here. Here we go, John Mischief and space. And hat wrangling or maybe Wrestling is better. And let's position that so it fits. Now if it's a little bit tight on the ends like I have in here, you can change the spacing or the size. I think I'm just going to wrap this down one more line like that. And that fits better. That's going to depend upon how tight you are on the sides. I came in a bit further this time than in my initial example, so it was a little bit tighter this time. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, Let's see how we're doing. I need to zoom out a little bit here. Hold the Alt key down. Let's zoom out. We now can adjust everything. I'll bring the kid down a little bit like that. Bring our reward down just a bit and the wanted down just a bit. Looks pretty good. We're just about there. The last thing I want to do is I want to distress the wanted and the 5,000 reward text lines. So do the wanted first. That's right here. Take this, drag it up to a new layer, and then hide the original layer. On this one, right click on the copy and simplify. And let's double click this one. I'm just going to change it from copy to distressed. There we are. Okay, now let's redock this. Just drag it right there to redock. Let's zoom in on that layer. There we go. You can see it a bit better. Looks good and go to the eraser tool in here and I'll change the brush let's go back to our 
natural brushes too that we used before. Here's that chalk dark. Double click on that one. And I'll set the size here to about 100 pixels in there. And there we go. There's the size of the brush. Now we're on the wanted. I'm just going to come in and erase just just do it. I'm just tapping this. I'm not actually erasing. I'm just kind of tapping on the edges and just removing a little bit of the type looking as if it's worn off. It's been you know, around for a while. That's The text is wearing down a little bit. That's kind of the effect that we're going for here. And just catch some of the edges. There we go. There's the wanted We'll do the exact same thing to reward down here. So let's go to our reward text layer. There it is. Drag it up to the new layer button. Hide the original text layer. That gives me a safety. If I mess this up, I can always go back to my original and try it again. That's why I'm doing that. Okay, let's just double click on this. I'm going to change this to distressed. And right click, simplify. There we are back to our same brush and just come in and do a little bit of the edges on this to distress this as well. Again, it looks like it's just been kicking around for a while and that's the effect that I want. Now, I'm only just clicking it once at a shot here so I'm not really taking off too much at a time. Just kind of thinning that out. And that's it. Now, you, If you want to, you can go down and you can do the same kind of thing on the bottom two layers of text. I'm not going to bother for this video, but you can do that as well. I'll take it just a little bit further and let's pull this up and see how we've done. And one more back out and there we go. So there it is. There is our wanted poster then our background layer like that. So wanted poster, we have our custom made paper in the background bit of distressing going on in here. At this point you can do final touches. I think maybe some of these lines are a bit too sharp and that's this folds layer here. So I'm going to bring the opacity down just a bit on that layer so it's not quite as much. Maybe 25, 26, that looks better. So that's always your last step is to take a look at your image, see if anything is just too much and if it is, just back off the opacity a little bit. That's one of the reasons why I have so many layers in here that allows me to do fine tuning like that at the end of the project. But there we go. There is our wanted poster. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this 